Okay, I have the body open and um, I've separated the uh, center taps from the ground, connected them with some jumpers and I've been testing some resistors to see what the value would be see if I can get this in there see what the value would be when I pull so this is 599 so basically 6 without that center tap connected it should go all the way to 8 here it is so with the center tap on just do this I need three hands sometimes four so that's uh, 8 28 and then if I put the center tap on it only drops to 6 and that required a 3.3 K resistor to be put in series with the center tap being connected to ground when you pull the switch out so this little resistor needs to be installed there we go. I have uh, successfully installed this little 3.3K uh, resistor right here on the switch. And I moved the center tap to the upper lug on the, that switch so that when you pull it, it connects these upper two contacts. And the bottom of the resistor is connected to ground through a jumper. When it's down, it connects the two lower ones, which are not connected to anything. Uh, the center one is open, so it connects the center, which is open, to the ground, which goes nowhere. So that's how that works. I'm leaving the capacitors as they were, 22 and 47. I don't really need a Gilmore on this thing. so. That's going to be the full extent of the mod on this. Um, I realized when I was going to work on it, I hadn't created a schematic back in the day when I was working on these things. And um, so I've taken one that I had done something else with that had a, an HSS and I modified it in order to um, get it to uh, represent what's what's in here I have to uh, do the measurements for the uh, uh, two pickups but other than that it basically represents how this has been wired so now I do have one it's nice to have schematics that you can take and quickly modify a few things in order to be able to uh, create a new one I've cheated a little ahead of you. The cover's on, guard's on. I changed the saddles out from the gold to uh, chrome of the same type because I, I, I had them here. And I thought, I'm gonna make a change. And now I'm gonna have to reset up all the intonation and everything again. Um, I've done a compounding and has made uh, a pretty good difference. On the swirling of the uh, finish and now I'm going to do some uh, wax going to do some wax we are back at bench one and about to sacrifice a set of Orphes to uh, redo the setup It's been a couple of days now since the <clears throat> last earlier part of this segment that I've been uh, playing with these Orphe strings on here. Uh, of course the high one broke again. Um, I'm having some success uh, trying to get this next set up. I've discovered that it has uh, an extreme back bow built into the neck and uh, the truss rod which is usually lefty loosey is now lefty tidy
trying to create, you know, an underbow in the neck to give some relief so that I can uh, try to get it in, a, in something that's playable. I think it's close there. And the other thing I decided to do was to uh, try to change the nut to, uh, to the brass one. It's a little bit wider than this plastic one that came on it. It fills the gap better at the top. Um, of course the top is flat so I'm going to have to try to also cut the back end of the nut off so that you know the strings have a, a nice break angle on the front. That's going to take me some time as well. And then the, what's going to happen is when I release this tension to work on the nut, well that neck is going to want to go back again and uh, I'm pretty sure it's the neck and not the body. So um, worst case scenario, you know, at some point the neck could be changed. It's too bad. It's such a, a pretty one to begin with. It's a nice piece of wood, but it's just got a terrible back bow in it. And if I change it, of course, I'll lose all of the, you know, logoing and stuff on, on the headstock. But, uh, you know, if worse comes to worst, uh, a future project to get a new strat neck and uh, see if I can make it work better with that. And uh, I haven't exhausted my playtime with this one. Okay, so yeah, it's a little bit too much now. I have to move it back just a tiny little bit the other way. It, it's trial and terror, as I call it, to uh, try to get it where I want it. And then what I, what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'll take the nut off, put it in my little vise that I bought to be able to work on the nuts and uh, cut some back angles on it. The front is fine. The, uh, the height over the front of the nut is good on, uh, on all the strings. A little over 18 thou, but not bad. I know, I know, people have been asking me, hey, what happened with the, you know, the ST70? Well, it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> The output on this guitar is uh, so robust that every so often I've got to look down to see if I've got an extra drive pedal on because um, this, uh, or all these pickups actually, on this guitar uh, sound so loud that it makes me think the uh, compressor's on and it's not. So yes, it has worked out perfectly. I still have my action <clears throat> pretty good. Right in there. Right in there. And so the extra leveling and uh, the roll off down here uh, has helped no more buzzing out so it was a success my will to try to make it better just wouldn't let me leave it alone and I had to keep going until I could actually make it work and use it or aside maybe like the Cozart went but yeah the pickups in this thing are really something <clears throat> best part of the guitar are the pickups and then uh, the fiddling with the neck
Well, I want to say that, uh, you know, it's taken a while, but hooray, 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 it works. Thanks for watching the whole series on this uh, reworking, the rework of the ST70 Paisley. Appreciate all your support. Catch you in the next one.